What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is March 3rd, 2022, and this is Season 2, Episode 38 of Got Our Attention Podcast. I know it's kind of crazy. We are already at 38. I feel like that every time we, we have this, but that's where we are. I don't know. I'm so, still only 27, so... Oh, well, yes. yeah. Well, don't get to 28. <laughs> we're 38. That's where... She's 27. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, I'm here with uh, Day Drinker ATL. So, what up, Kelly? I've got... Uh, also, Phoenix Nova with us, Brian. What's what's up, Brian? How are you doing? Spinning the knobs and like trying to figure out what to do next. You're on turntables. What's going on here? What so the wrong kind of knobs, like video <laughs> knobs, T bars. <laughs> so, uh, I just want to start this off with uh, first off. Uh, right now, there's a lot of things going on in the world uh, with between Ukraine and Russia, uh, mostly because Russia's being a bully or Putin is being a bully. But uh, ultimately what I want to say is, you know, our, as, as SAS gaming, all of us, uh, our hearts do go out to all of those in Ukraine for the, the, the serious amounts of just wrongness that's happening. And, uh, and it's, and it's sad. We, we also, uh, our hearts go out to any of the uh, other people who were involved in this that may not be, you know, backing the situation that's happening. And it just happens to be caught up in that. Uh, so I just want to say our hearts go out to you guys. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely here to support Ukraine. We, we really, you know, think everybody should have a free reign to, to be a human. Uh, I don't see why, you know, people don't understand that, but you know, it is what it is. But anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, it is very important. And, you know, we don't want to make light of that because I know we're having this podcast and we like to have fun and, and we like to, to bring other stories into this, but it is something that affects our news. It is something that we can't get away from. And I don't want to make light of it. I want to make sure that we, we do address it because it is something that is, it's a very concerning issue. Very so. important. Yeah. Hopefully soon, uh, you know, it'll hopefully be over and big bad guy will leave them alone. So we'll see what happens. The big bad wolf. He's yeah, huffing basically. and puffing. It's by himself. It's just him. Just, yeah. just that guy. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, how are you guys doing? Other than that? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> it's a warm day here. It is. Nice it's and, nice and tasty. Way too hot. Well, it's not way too hot. I, mean, I, I it's way too hot for lately. Was, usually I'm, I don't complain because I usually like the hotter weather because I just stay inside and the AC is on. But I don't like the cold weather and like snow. It's not something I like. So for it to be 80, it's like, that's good. We can hang out. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. Hey, man, totally Listen, hang out seriously, outside. like I got some woodworking to do and hey. I require temperatures over 50 degrees on a constant basis and not raining. So I'm looking forward to the weekend. Actually, Heck that's yeah. funny. You have some woodworking to do at my house as well. That yes. we need to interesting address. how that. I actually found that post again the other day. I mean, about the fact that we're talking the, about wood. I mean, that's something that I'm greatly into. So. You're, yes. you're near and dear of to all wood, the people. I, <laughs> of all, the, if there's anybody who <laughs> loves wood on this podcast and loves to talk about wood on this podcast, yeah. it's, it's it's me. That guy. so. I think I mentioned that before, but there was like in Lost Ark, as soon as I chopped down a tree, I was like sending screenshots like, oh, I chopped down a tree. And then I chopped the tree. It's like a screenshot of just chopping trees out. (laughs) Well, no, what was even funnier is when you figured out for the first time that you could chop down a tree with a friend and it changes the animation to, uh, you know, like a a two person saw. Oh, it was so cool. Loved it. It was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) 10 out of 10. Do it again. For sure. Clearly you have problems. Let me know if you guys want to join me. (laughs) <laughs> anyway so yeah now that we kind of got that stuff out of the way i uh, hope everybody's doing well you guys that are listening thank you for being here or you know, thank you for listening and then those live thank you for watching uh mm-hmm. we really appreciate it without you guys we wouldn't be here so it is what it is all right kelly take us to your magical place uh, Kelly's corner. so it's not the first the first story isn't very magical um Bring in. Well, I think not, it not, is not keeping it really lighthearted. Well, I, I did switch things up. Oh, well, maybe it is magical. I don't know. Um, it's a different kind of magic. Uh, so, did you guys you're, you're, know? You're talking about the land of Baba Yaga. So, <laughs> yes, it is. It is magical. It's very magical. Yes. D- did you guys know that? The sunflower is the national flower of Ukraine. No, did not. No, I did not know that either. I learned that today reading this amazing story about 
uh, a viral tweet that has more than 2 million um, likes now. It is a video of a Ukrainian woman talking to a Russian, Russian soldier. And they look like they're just having kind of a normal exchange. You can't, it's, it's all in Russian. And so you, 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 just from their body language, it doesn't look awful. I mean, she it almost looks like she's asking for directions at the beginning. The conversation goes something like, and this is translated, her saying, who are you? Um, and the soldier says, we have exercises here. Please go away. And then she starts asking if they're Russian. And she says, so what the f*** are you doing here? Uh, you're occupants. You are fascists. What the f*** are you doing on our land with the all these guns? And... Um, there's more of an exchange. And finally, she says to him, take these seeds and put them in your pockets. So at least sunflowers will grow when you all lie down there. So basically, once you're dead, at least something good will come out of this. And by the way, you're f-ing going down. You're going to be dead. I, I So I heard this, but I didn't hear... I didn't know the story behind it. Like Mm -hmm. I did read that line of someone Mm -hmm. saying that, but I didn't realize it was like their state flower. I didn't realize that or their country's flower. I didn't realize it was, um, (laughs) I I just didn't realize that. So that makes the story a hundred percent better, which is awesome. Yeah. (laughs) And so because of this tweet, this, this video, um, the people are in protest adding, uh, sunflower you know symbols to their tweets to their texts they're wearing sunflowers they're putting sunflowers in their hair they're you know graffitiing sunflowers on buildings and stuff like that well if it's is it actually graffiti or is it like street art because there's a difference i mean at this point i i mean well graffiti is like tagging like garbage and then street art's like it's a matter of perspective but it used to be there used to not be a deline a, a verbal delineation, I guess, you know. Uh, well, it's also about so did you get permission it, or are people are OK yes. with you tagging their building? That's yes. more of the well, problem. I, this isn't really a tag. And, you know, it's kind of like a war zone right now. So I think it's like, OK. Like, oh, you're talking about I in think, Ukraine. I bet you're talking about people here in the like the U.S. Yes, and stuff. Other no. countries like doing this. Yeah, oh, OK. OK. You're talking about, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, it may be happening other places. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we'll drive around and see something. Yeah. So I thought that was a a pretty badass story. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's, like I said, it's something that we can't take lightly, right? Like this Mm -hmm. is a serious issue. It's a serious thing going on. And even though that's not like a great story, I guess you could say, but like, it's still, it's still kind of cool to hear. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a weird it's really strange. This is yeah. not how I thought my 2022 would be like, but no. you know, roll the dice. I guess we uh, will always find out what's what's next. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, moving on to something less serious. I love UFO stories. I'm not like some huge conspiracy theorist or anything, but when I see something with, oh, you know, UFO in the headline, I like to peruse the article. And remember, we were talking last year about how the U.S. government has declassified a lot of UFO sightings and stuff like that. Well, apparently a year ago, February 21st, 2021, There was an American Airlines flight flying um, between Albuquerque and Ohio, I believe, Cincinnati. By way of Um, the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Let's go back to that one in just a minute. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised with some of the weird reassignments they do with layovers and stuff. Like, you bought that ticket, and it's like, I I get notification. I have a flight right now booked for PAX, technically. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I get updates every day. And it's like, oh, your flight has now changed with this. It's like usually just a couple minutes difference, like the thing has changed. But initially, it was a direct flight. Now it's like, I have an extra stop. 
to go to like another city. No, the opposite like direction. Lake city. <laughs> like it's, it's literally the opposite direction of where I'm going. And He's going I to, to Miami, go there to go then yeah. to Boston. Yeah. It's, I, it's stupid, but yeah, you say that though. I, I have heard of people having to fly to like, where uh, the place that we live to Salt Lake City and then to yeah. Boston or whatever. Well, yeah, and it's, and derail, it's cheaper that way. You yeah, know? I hate to derail the conversation so much, but yeah, yeah. The, it is cheaper that way for the airliners, right? Yeah, and and it actually, with it's great. There's a there's a this is a whole this is it's a plug. This is not sponsorship or anything like that. But there's a website called Scotch Cheap Flights uh, dot com, and there's a guy who basically figured out the algorithm for the flight system and has a website that you, and it's, it's totally legal because it's just public knowledge. It's just, people don't know this. Mm. And, and they had to change a little bit, but initially it was, they were finding these flights that are basically these layover flights. And instead of going to the last point, like let's say Boston where PAX is at, you actually want to go to Salt Lake city, but you can buy this <gasps> cheap flight to Boston. And then when you get there, you just get off in Salt Lake City and then you're in you're in Salt Lake City where you you're want like, to go. I'm good. Never mind. Thank and you. And it's, you know, 50 yeah. bucks because like this weird. Airlines get really cranked yeah. when you do that. Yeah, they get really <laughs> upset. And it's, and it's not illegal, but it's it's one of those things where they can like prevent you from flying their airline in the future. So oh. it's well, also it's they, like don't have checked baggage because you're not going to get in the mm. layover. Yeah. You can only do yeah. carry on. Oh my on. gosh. Yeah. So there, there's, but there's some restrictions. If you're doing there carry on and yeah. you, you're at the like end of the line and they're like, sorry guys, there's no more overhead luggage space left. You're like F in the A. Yeah. Only just put You're your going lap. to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a rear Scotch cheap flights.com. I've had them for a while, but they mostly do international flights, which is really cool. Uh, but it's it is something weird like that where they they've been figured out the algorithm of like the different flights and things and you can get stuff cheaper just because of that. So I don't know. It's cool. Listen, I would risk getting banned from the airline if it means that I get a flight from where we are to Boston, but the layovers in Paris, France. Yes, and I jump off at the okay layover. In I, Paris, I don't France. see like, that I happening much, that. but. Like actually, there, it's. I mean, I don't want to get on that whole conversation, but it's like there was one last year for, I think it was, uh, I think New York to like Australia for like five hundred bucks or something, like what? Like extremely ridiculous, but like it because of the certain time frame and a certain even a glitch. Like if they have a glitch, they have to honor it. Like if you've already bought the tickets, they just have to do it. So it's oh like, yeah, right. It's yeah. crazy. But yeah. Anyway, back to your story. Yeah. Back to my story. <laughs> So, <clears throat> excuse me, an American Airlines flight, they were flying over Albuquerque. It was going from Phoenix to Cincinnati. This is February 21st, 2021. The pilot notices something fly right over them. It's an unidentified flying object. It uh, scared the crap out of him. And the pilot says to air traffic control uh we just had something just go over the top of us i hate to say this but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast right over the top of us which is super terrifying if you are (laughs) the pilot pilot. (laughs) (laughs) and know this and you're you know but super exciting for zeisia who thinks it's a log (laughs) <laughs> well, no. Well, what's funny is it sounds like that was an ex-military pilot because why would he think it's a cruise missile? Like that's something he's probably familiar that's, with. Like, yes, like that would possibly. be terrifying. Well, I'd be yes. like, oh my god, <laughs> like oh, like PTSD instantly. Yeah. So the FAA initially they weren't confirming reports about it. Then American Airlines did confirm the report. And the FAA also, FAA air traffic controllers also confirmed that they did not see any objects in the area or on the radar scopes. Sweet. Yes. Very interesting to me. What the heck was it? But apparently this happens way more often than people know. Oh, yeah, for sure. And pilots are afraid to to like come forward because 
when they do, they get pushback from the airlines themselves. One pilot said, uh, most pilot, this is quoting the mirror.co.uk article. Uh, most pilots will use phrases like unidentified traffic or aerial phenomenon. No one wants to say UFO. If you say UFO, people think you're either drunk or on drugs or nuts. Ah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So and they yeah, they don't play that. Yes. And, and, and what people don't realize, too, is when one of the another reason why they don't say ufos because when you say ufo people immediately think aliens but an unidentified flying object is anything it just has the yeah. stigma yeah. of being alien like because so of what totally it needs to be is and whatnot. the pilot just needs to, to record it on tiktok and then people will believe it oh god yes yes not saying that he should be flying a plane well while everything he's on tiktok is TikTok, true TikTok, but Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. The fact that he's mm. piloting a plane using right. TikTok, he can just record and then <laughs> splice what he needs, and you know, and then talk yeah. over, you know. So I, 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 I thought it was taco. super. <laughs> taco. <laughs> I saw Brian's eyes light up. He was like mm, taco tacos. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just, I, I did not realize how frequently it happened until I read through this article too. So I thought that was interesting and stuck it in the corner. <laughs> all right. Well, what else you got in that corner? That's Kinda all weird. I got in my corner today. Oh, crap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, it's great because we have a lot of news, uh, especially about something that I'm super excited about in the news corner. When I get there, I'm glad the that news that corner. was not great. Are we going to so, rename it a news corner? <laughs> I had that a lot better in my head. I was going to lead that in a little better, and then you threw me off with the weirdness. Mm, yeah. happens. I just do the so, fast one next time. Yeah, If you're like me <laughs> and you're, you're crazy and you've pre-ordered a Steam Deck, uh, something that hasn't been released yet, something that you only pay $5 for a voucher to be able to be in line, uh, which is you know, to help the way the, the scalpers and all the crazy bots. I mean, and, stuff like and also Zyce likes to deal. stand in lines. No, it's like, like, stand it's a virtual line, line so for can the do it brunch. Anywhere. Yes. <laughs> Not necessarily. I know. Wait, I was... Champagne brunch. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I'll be there for sure. Let's do Tacos that. and brunch. <laughs> so, so Steam Deck, no if you're not familiar, uh, Steam Deck is Valve's new handheld device that they're producing. Uh, it's very similar in the shape of like a Game Gear, I guess you could say, or like a Switch. Um, but what it is, it's... Uh, <laughs> Seriously, what? you like Game Gear? Yeah, because it looks like a Game Gear. I just want to pause for a moment. It kind of does. The, the it does look like a Game Gear. It's just not I know, thick. but... For for oh. the listening audience, Switch being as ambiguous as it is, is going to be I just much make sure more I identifiable everyone. than there, there are Game fifty plus Gear. people listening to us. I want to make sure that they that's they true. understand. That's true. Like they may not know what a Switch is. They know what a Game Gear is. I mean, that's you know whatever. But oh, everybody please. younger than us. So if, if, if they knew what a Game, Game Gear was, Gear even if they're fifty now, they know what a Switch is. Yeah, that's so, true. So Valve uh, has uh, last year announced that they were going to be producing a handheld device and it's not going to be a proprietary system in the sense of like they're going to produce their own games like only Half-Life 3 will be on this, which Half-Life 3 is not announced, obviously. Uh, but uh, what it is, is it's going to allow the Steam, uh, the over what's called a big, uh, is it big screen, big feet. What the hell is it called? It's uh, it's God, I always screen. do this. It's big screen. Uh, it's basically it's running screen. on a Linux kernel called uh, Proton. And it allows you to run the Steam platform with all of your games you sign into and be able to play them in a handheld device. Uh, so if you're like me and you have like a million different games on your Steam profile, then you'll be able to take those games virtually and take them with you. So really cool idea. And of course, yeah. as soon as that was announced, everybody wanted one. So uh, the, what they did was they said $5 vouchers. You get a $5 coupon. Uh, where you, you pay $5 towards the deposit, essentially, for these devices. And when the time comes to buy them, they'll go through the queue and they'll send out emails for those people who have already purchased the $5 coupon or voucher or whatever. Uh, kind of keep away from the scammers and all the bots and all these things that we've had issues with, with all the video cards over the past years um, or consoles or whatever at this point shoes. Uh, so 
Anyway, so we're here. So February 28th was supposed to be emulator. The emulator? Yes, Proton's the emulator. Apparently it's Arch Linux. Well, it's Arch and Linux, it's running, yes. And yeah, it's yeah. running Steam OS 3. So it's actually kind of nice that Valve actually gets to use Steam OS after all these years of creating. Gotcha. Aww. That's that's that's, that's what it is. Yes. So uh, so with that, now that February 28th has happened, uh, everybody's like freaking out because the week before we're like starting to get updates and we're like, yep, February 28th is going to happen. Uh, One o'clock Eastern time. You're going to get an email. Well, sort of. They said they're going to go through sort the queue. <laughs> so everybody that logged in, if you look into your queue now, if you've already purchased a $5 voucher, it's going to tell you that yours expected in Q1 or Q2. If you bought the lowest end model, uh, which is the one that I purchased, which for 4 99 or 3 99 or something like that, I can't remember. I haven't paid for it yet. So uh, if, you, sure. if you purchase that one, that one's available Q1. All of the mid-tier and the top tier are going to be available Q2 at some point. So Q1, they're going to go through all of the queue, starting at the top. So the person who clicked the number one queue, person that reserved one, and work their way down until they get everybody that wants to buy one, buy one. Well, they're going to do this in batches. So I didn't get an email yet. So one o'clock came along. Uh-oh. And I mean, I bought mine. I, I got the receipt like 15 minutes, I think, after it went on sale. But I mean, you imagine everybody that's in front of me for 15 minutes, right? So yeah. first round went out. It a lot was of people were like, hey, you know, I've received one. Everybody else was like, nope, didn't get one. And they were only going to do it for like an hour. So like that one hour, they were sending out emails and that was it. And then we're like, okay, well, what do we do now? Well, another update. They said, hey, let you know, those who haven't received an email, we're going to send out more emails for the rest of quarter one. Because we said quarter one. Well, quarter one is technically till March 31st. Yes. So they said starting on uh, March 7th, I think it's 7th or 9th, whatever Monday is coming up, uh, they're going to start sending out more emails. And then another wave. And then they're going to do that for every Monday for the rest of the month until everyone has the ability to buy one. So that's where we're at. I haven't gotten one yet. I'm hoping on Monday that I'll be able to subscribe, like to be able to purchase it and get it ordered. Um, but of course with that, there's a lot of different things that are happening in, uh, with this because people are starting to get their hands on it. Not just the reviewers. Uh, one of the people that I do follow is Linus tech tips and Linus is like really nuts. Like he's like super nerdy about all his gear. Uh, he'll take like heat guns and try to figure out like the thermom, like the actual temperature of the device. And I mean, he just does all these crazy tests uh, to try to like, you know, figure this stuff out. And of course they said, Steam said, and on the 28th, all of our embargoes will be lifted. So any person that's reviewed this will be able to say whatever they want to at this point. So immediately Linus puts out another video saying like Steam Deck unfinished. And we're like, oh my God, here we go. Like you told me already this was awesome. Now you're saying it's unfinished. But it was kind of a troll because <laughs> he he talks about it. And by the end of the video, he's like, yeah, so you should definitely buy one. Like this is this is a no brainer. Like, and he said, yeah, there are obviously some things about it that like will be eventually fixed most likely and things that he thinks could be better. Um, but ultimately it's like a, it's a great device. He's like, this is a device that we've been wanting for a long time. There's so many settings that you can adjust like a PC, like you can just change all these things to make the game run that you want to run. So anyway, that's really cool. Uh, but also they come out steam. So, so valve uh, announces that they have a new game coming up and we're like, what? Like without a Steam Deck. And he's like, new game. And we're like, Half-Life 3. And you're like, no, not Half-Life 3. Come on, no, we're not going to make Half-Life that 3. That already it's came out on the VR <laughs> stuff. It's never came out. Uh, so it's a new game. It's not Portal 3. It's but Portal 3. Portal, it's not Portal 3. It's n- it literally, it says not Portal 3. But it's in the Portal universe. So this game is actually called Aperture Desk Job. And... It's basically how is that, a short game to teach you how the new Steam Deck works. Is that uh, oral sex okay. with portals? Yes, <laughs> basically. So uh, that game actually released Aperture on March first. Desk job. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> See? See? So the day drinker knows. So anyway, um, it's not a mouse and keyboard <laughs> game. It's literally designed to run on your Steam Deck. And it's supposed to like give you the idea because it does have um, I'm going to murder this word. I think it's like the gyration or the what is it called? The gyroscope oh, that has it where you the can gyration gyration. 
Um, the gyration you can of, actually, of aperture desk job. You can move also known as uh, the actual free. handheld device with your hands to like turn yeah, on the screen it's got and a gyroscope. such. Um, so it has that to help you kind of like figure the stuff out. So um, like the Wii U had. Yeah. We use, which has it as well. I mean, it's not something yeah. new, um, but it's yeah. just a, it's another aspect of the actual device. So I, I, I think it's cool. cool that they had a release title for a handheld console, which also had this huge, you know, backlog of, games yeah. that were available back library of games and because it's essentially just a PC. Right. Uh, and the other thing so they mentioned I, which is, is which is a positive thing. A lot of people were like, so does that mean they're going to release games now? And it's no, they're not. Valve has already said they're not making this a platform. This is not something that they're trying to release right. new games to and continue this oh, yeah. like proprietary thing. No, they, they said they don't want that. They want literally just other people to put games on it. We just want to make the hardware. They just want to be, no. you know, that that's all they want to do. Uh, so when the game or actually the steam deck got released, uh, I actually read this on Reddit uh, from one of the people who this happened to. And this was something that obviously different people picked up. There's a verge article that I'm looking at right now that talks about this, but so the, the, the article that I mean, or the Reddit post that Valve I read tweeted it too. It wasn't just the oh, news okay. articles, but like Valve totally tweeted this. So the guy on Reddit's like, hey, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm pretty sure like Gabe from Valve just hand delivered my Steam Deck. And I love this. <laughs> so this isn't the guy in the video that we're seeing right now. Um, but the guy that was posting was basically like he wasn't home and his wife calls him that there's some dude at the door saying he's got some package for him. And he's like, okay, uh, well, he's like, well, he wants you to come here. And he's like, well, I'm obviously not there. And she says, uh, well, can I take a message or something? And he's like, well, yeah, just let him know that, you know, like Gabe uh, new will come by to deliver the steam deck. And he's like, wait, who's, who's there. And she's like, yeah, there's like a film crew. There's like a dude, like they got a big beer. And he's like freaking out because he instantly knows how, who this is. How and pissed would you be? Yeah. So he's like, right? like he's like, oh, my you God. Oh, my there. God. And she says, like, as she's like, as he's leaving and she goes, um, so one more time, what was your name again? <laughs> 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 and like, he's just like, I can't believe it. And just like, so today I learned like that actually is happening. And it, it is true. Like there's an article about it. There's video footage of him walking around different places, literally hand delivering signed yeah. steam decks to, to people, uh, which is kind of funny because well, his mask is so small signed, compared to his beard. It's hilarious. Signed. <laughs> and also he's like very like self-conscious about it. He's like, yeah. Hey, uh, I hope it's okay, but I signed this too. Like it, he's like, yeah. like a, a weird, like level of being humble, um, yeah. Yeah. nervous, really, you know, that did kind of, kind of the, 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 um, you know, being nervous as an introvert type thing. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> this poor girl's <laughs> like, what's going on with this camera crew? Why she's is like, this box open? Cause the boxes else? were like open. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, weird because like <laughs> he was flat out signing the boxes in the van yeah. as they were going around so the boxes are like they're cut open she's like oh do you need me to sign for this do you need, she's like anything else okay yeah. this is weird yeah, yeah. Super well funny. It, it, which which is okay because not all of them are gonna like know him yeah. but super cool for the people that do know him and yes. like again yeah. having a signed uh, like the no one, the one guy him? goes, you're Gabe Newell. <laughs> yeah. Like he totally knows who he is and you can tell he's like starstruck and he's like, okay, thanks dude. Like he just didn't know what to do. <laughs> just do it yeah. on the ground right well, there. I mean, smash yeah. him <laughs> this is a piece of crap. I already saw it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously uh, the steam deck has a lot of good things that are going to come from it, uh, but there's also a lot well, of issues. Well, just real quick what? before you move on, yep. uh, you can go and you can check that out. It is uh, tweeted out literally by at on deck, which is steam deck on Twitter, uh, which is valves steam deck account. Uh, and the, the tweet is uh, humorously titled as we hired a new delivery guy to help with the steam deck launch. <laughs> Not sure he's going to work out. <laughs> So uh, obviously things are a little different because 
So like, like Phoenix said, this is a PC. This is literally a handheld PC. The way they've designed it is really meant to just run PC games. And that kind of strikes up a different conversation when it comes to PC games, because steam is not the only platform that you can buy games from. And over the years now, we've seen many different companies create their own launchers to have their game on. And even recently we saw that Bethesda has said that they're not going to use a launcher anymore. They're just going to let steam handle their games from now on. Uh, because there's, you know, there's rockstar, there's Epic, there's the steam, there's, uh, there's, uh, well, there was Bethesda, there's uh, Ubisoft. I mean, everyone has their own launcher, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. GOG, um, not saying not saying it's a bad thing, but as a consumer, I'm having to like figure out what launcher to yes. play my game on. Like it's, it's just insane at this point. Like I'm just I'm not saying Steam is the best, but most of my games are there. I wish everything was just there because they just, yeah. better. and there's been some people who have made third party software to kind of mix all those together and some work kind of good, some work not so great. Um, but it just depends on what you're looking for, what really key characteristics you're looking for. Um, but one company actually already came out and stated that they are not going to release their game on the steam deck. And that would be Bungie. So Bungie with destiny two uh, has come out and said that they were not going to allow destiny 2 on the steam deck um and there's Which kind of reasoning is, behind it and well, this like we talked a little bit about we talked about bungie last week too and i think it's all like geared around the purchase from sony so i would believe that if it wasn't for the fact that once i kind of read into it a little bit more it kind of made more sense okay. so the way that this is running now is basically a Linux uh, platform. It's a Linux OS. It's really running at this point. Um, so Destiny 2, along with uh, many other games, have these things called cheat engines that are uh, are actually cheat prevention engines that are running, um, like Battleline, different things like that, to prevent cheaters from actually breaking their games. And in this scenario, they're saying, like, Destiny 2 is not going to be... And, and actually, if you install Destiny 2 and, be, and you're finding out you're playing Destiny 2 on a Steam Deck, they'll ban your account. Like, they're, like, serious about this. Wow. And, and the reasoning behind this, most likely, is going to be based on, because of those cheat engines, it's going to be a lot easier to finagle and get around those cheat engines, like those cheat prevention engines, rather than being able to run this on a PC where it's supposed to be installed and it's supposed to run from. Okay. So yeah. that they haven't said that yet, but that's really kind of the direction that they're kind of coming at because this is, you know, it's a, it's a most popular, it's a really popular game for this type of, yes. like, you know, first person shooter slash like MMO type of game. Um, and, and battle eye is like this anti cheat software is actually the, the word to say, but um, they haven't really said that that's like a thing they're going to do on steam deck. Like really like, it's not like, it's not like a thing that they've perfected yet. Right. So yeah. they're like, you know, maybe this will change in the future, but right now, not going to happen. Um, not to mention, you know, they is it's a PC. You can load any other launcher because that's the thing. You can do that if you want to. Uh, just like Epic with Fortnite, there is you know you could play Fortnite on here, but yeah. again, there is a an anti cheat system that's supposed to be working, and you know Epic may say you're not supposed to do that. Uh, yeah. Along with the Epic launcher being loaded in, or the Xbox, you know, Game Pass loaded in, which. Funny, Game Pass is actually they've already Valve uh, actually Gabe tweeted out and said, hey, if if Microsoft wants to work with us on getting Game Pass here, we're down. We'll do it. Yeah. Like because he's again, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about trying to have proprietary software. He just or games. He just wants to have a, a device that you can play anything on. Like that's all he's going yeah. to look for. He's trying to solve a problem. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. Uh, not make a solution as what Brian was saying <laughs> to me earlier. About. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's interesting. So I don't think destiny two is gonna be the only game that's going to say no to steam deck. Uh, and then there's also like Epic. I wouldn't see Epic cause Epic and valve are like competing companies essentially. Right. Like I wouldn't see well, them wanting to have their games yeah. on the platform. That well, makes, no, you know, well not entirely. Ep Epic is fine except for again, similar to destiny. It's the multiplayer games, uh, especially multiplayer games that have esports around it and mm -hmm. anti-cheat that they can't necessarily always get running in Proton. They, Epic uh, owns the easy anti-cheat or whatever it is that Fortnite uses, but other mm -hmm. games use that as well. 
and they were able to get that anti-cheat. They worked on that anti-cheat so it'd work in Proton, just not the newer version that Fortnite uses. Uh, so uh, some of, I, I think they're kind of hiding behind the whole, we can't control what cheaters do on Linux because it's going to be so much easier for them to do it. And I'm like, that's I mean, like, that's so funny because people true. are always scared of Linux and, and it's so funny. I mean, like just PC and Linux versus mm-hmm. like Windows versus Linux. People are always like, oh, Linux, like, you know, Linux, like, wow. It's like, but it's really not that different, especially if you use yeah. like some of the, the OSs that have the GUI built in, like, like Mint or something like it's, it's just a desktop. Like it, yeah. it seems almost like an Apple. I mean, Apple is basically yeah, running a Linux level that style. It's yeah. the kernel level that they're concerned about. Right, right. Well, I'm just saying, but like in general, people are always like, oh, Linux is that Linux I'm, supposed I'm to I'm getting be. just a little bit triggered for those of you who <laughs> might know easy to rebuild your Careful. kernel and restart sip yeah nobody wants to do that nobody's gonna Stop. nobody's gonna make changes on a on an os without telling people right like we're not gonna we're not gonna just have a server on the floor the that's M-word like changing asmr voice nobody's gonna have a server Stop on the floor it. updating every server like automatically with that's not even listed on the server network i mean come on nobody does that anyway You're right so so there's some other things with Steam Deck that's coming out. So there's a <laughs> there's an article by Forbes and uh, one of the the writers there or journalists there, Jason uh, Evelan- Ev- Evangelo, Evangelo, uh, posted Evangelo, 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 maybe. I maybe. I, I'm not. Uh, he okay, posted this article. Me, I'll tell you. Okay, cool. Uh, so he posted this article talking about the Steam Deck and how it limits the frames. Uh, Cause there is an ability in steam deck to limit your frame rate based on the game you're playing uh, because frame rates can be based around obviously the performance of the game. Also how long the battery is going to run. So if you're trying to run a game at like well, full quality, like all the way, you're probably not going to have a lot of battery life. So if you want to keep also it consistent game code in some games that are based on the frame rate. So if you mess with the yes. frame rate, you can actually mess with the game from software. And a lot of the demon souls and, and dark souls was related to that, but there's others as well. There's some that if you increase the frame rate, uh, if you go down a ladder, you'll clip through the world and, you know, different things like that. So, yeah. Uh, so but yeah, he basically a does reasons. a comparison of cyberpunk 2077 running on a steam deck and it's live footage of like him filming this it's like side by side. And the left side is un frame rate, like just letting the Steam Deck do what it does, uh, along with the game running with the Steam Deck having the frame uh, limiter on for like 30 FPS. And it's actually really great to see the difference between these two. So he puts in the video, he's like, I'm playing this on medium settings, not high, because, you know, we're talking about a Steam Deck here. We're not talking about a high-end PC. It's yeah. something, it's meant to be a mobile device where you can take this with you. Like, it's not meant to be You don't care. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're understanding you're going to give up some graphics. Right. Yeah, right. because it's... So he, <laughs> he plays this, and the left side, there are times where it does get kind of glitchy, depending on what's loading in the world with the assets and such. Where the right side with the frame limiter on that steam is created, like the actual steam deck frame limiter is actually pretty smooth. Like it, you can't even tell there's any glitch at all. Like there's really not many like things clipping. Wow. And so he shows a couple other games, he shows Borderlands three, he showed, uh, what's another game? I can't remember. It was on there, but even with that, like some of these games, cause the thing is like what Brian's saying, some of that has to deal with code and some games actually put those limiters in the game so that you can hopefully get better frame rate and better performance if you want to. And he compared it to Borderlands 3 having the frame limiter on for them versus the actual Steam, and Steam still outperformed the game, the actual code oh, Steam what? limiter. So he's like, I'm not really sure like if they meant like if they knew that it was going to be that good or if like like what they're doing, but it's it's really good. Like it's pretty pretty impressive. So um that is something, like I said, it's out there for that. You can you can do this on pretty much any game. Um, and because the main thing is, you know, you're not going to be playing these games or actually let me back up. You can play these games on basically like ultra graphics and, you know, but your battery is going to last like 30 minutes. <laughs> like, And yeah. let's be real. That's not the purpose why you bought the Steam Deck. You bought it so you can sit on a flight for like an hour and a half, mm-hmm. two hours. 
three hours and just like play it through depends. Valley Are you for going like from forever. Atlanta to Salt Lake City to Boston? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, for what we're looking at here, like to actually play like a game like Borderlands 3 or even Cyberpunk 2077, that actually got me excited because I'm like, I, I do want to go back to Cyberpunk 2077, but maybe this will be a perfect opportunity to do that because I can play it you know, while I'm forced to just sit there and do nothing. Like I could just play yeah. that and just, you know, go through a couple hours of it. So really cool on that. Oh man. So much steam deck news. Cause I'm so pumped. Uh, the last thing. <laughs> so stoked. The last thing was it steam didn't Punk. help. You took 10 minutes before the news talking about steam decks before you actually started the news. Yeah. Stories. <laughs> so not steampunk, but steam deck. So the last it's, thing it's is Mike uh, steam hour. Yeah, it was it was uh, announced or yeah, it was announced. Oh, I didn't say deck <laughs> earlier this week. <laughs> OK, that's what I thought I heard. That's what I thought I heard earlier this week. Uh, people were already getting these things in their hands. <laughs> the we Steam only deck. care about the, and the f- move. The, uh, <laughs> so the Steam Deck basically started getting people's hands. And of course, videos on TikTok and Instagram, and things like that. These stories started showing up where. Uh, they were reporting that there was a drift issue, a joystick drift issue with the Steam Deck. And a video that I watched literally showed a um, person messing with the joystick. And as they let go, the mouse would just continue, like the cursor would just continue scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And I did it multiple oh times, like barely touch it. It would just keep going, keep going. And well, that's, that's, that's a huge thing problem. with. I will tell well, you, I've had with, that happen to me with a couple of mice. And oh, uh, I. M- makes me freaking well, nuts. There's imagine nothing paying worse. Like five hundred dollars for a device that's right. brand new and it's yeah. doing that. <laughs> like yeah. brand new well, out of the it, box. And it's not and it's okay. not like it, it's a device that has a cursor showing on the screen. So where some UIs just have like blocks and you're bouncing from block to block, you know, they might program into it, oh the, the joystick needs to go past a certain threshold before we mm. jump to the next block. We can't do that if you got a cursor on the screen. Uh, it's a lot more noticeable in something like the Steam Deck. Yeah, and this is not the first company. That's like So Nintendo had the same thing with the Switch. There was, after time, mm-hmm. um, their, their well, joysticks time, and Joy-Con controllers. Not immediately controllers. after unboxing. Yeah. Well, after time <laughs> again, of playing it, like their Joy Cons would have thing. the same issue. And, it's, and there's a thing called Dead Zone on joysticks that you can adjust to basically adjust the sensitivity of how much you have to push it in a direction for it to start moving. So immediately people were like hot fix, like, Oh, just adjust your dead zone. But like, you know, Demir actually said this like to me, he was like, but if you're like already having to adjust your dead zone for a brand new device, like yeah. that's just wrong. Like that's not right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, um, Steam Deck, that, Valve already announced that there's a software patch. It's the old, well, if this is already happening, what else is wrong? Right. Well, no, there's, there's, also, there's also the fact that it perhaps, because a lot of people think the dead zone and all you can do is increase the dead zone. And that's not necessarily the case. One, it could be the dead zone was like misconfigured. It was already skewed as it was anyway. And perhaps that what caused it. And all they're doing is correcting it because, I mean, errors yeah. creep into code. The dead zone is not a physical thing. It is a it is a software encoded thing. So it could be that someone like, oh, we were coding the dead zone for this particular type of stick uh, and switch, but we didn't realize that later because of shortages or whatever, they switched out to another one. And, you know, the dead zone's just encoded it wrong. And so, and, and that's the other thing is just because they have a dead zone doesn't mean they have to widen it on just one side. They could actually shift it and it'd be still be okay too. Yeah. So, so shortly I mean, after it, this, earlier this week, okay. like earlier this week, they announced like people were posting this. Well, already as of March 1st, um, we have the valve UX designer, Lawrence Yang confirmed on Twitter. He said, hi all a quick note about the steam deck thumbsticks. The team has looked into the reported issues and it turns out it was a dead zone regression from a recent firmware update. So we just shipped out a fix to address the bug. So make sure you're up to date. So they've already corrected it. We're done. We're done here. Yeah. And so. it was a bug. So yeah, totally. I didn't read that part and I nailed that. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> you just let me finish. No. <laughs> so that's true, it, guys. True. That's all this I have. True. That's all I have for Steam Deck <laughs> this week until I potentially get one in my hands. And then once we do that, then I can go through the full blown like this is awesome or this sucks 
and we'll talk about it. Well, it's uh, not going to yeah. suck. It's just oh, going to be gonna suck. not. Yeah, it's, no it's going to be gonna a little suck. PC. Yeah, I'm going to love yeah. it. It's going to be great. It's going to be preloaded with Half Life Three. I'm not going to tell you. About It'll it, be miniature. Yeah. Oh god. Oh, god. <laughs> anyway, speaking anyway, of miniature, tell me about that of, Elden Rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speaking of miniature. Take it away, Daydreamer. <laughs> Segway of the year. Year. year, year. <laughs> All right. So, Benny Namco, the publisher of Elden Ring, is increasing or announced that they are going to be increasing the average monthly salary for their in- employees by about 50,000 yen. Um, that is a monthly increase, uh, not a yearly increase. 50,000 yen. Quick Google about 433 US dollars. And here's the, here's the deal. I'm never going to complain about any raise that I'm going to get. Um, especially not, you know, something that's going to turn out to be $5,200 a year. So that's fantastic. But it's all part of them trying to improve working conditions and, um, putting everybody on a level playing field and, you know, stabilizing income. Uh, so the, uh, sorry, the starting salary is going to be, uh, the starting salary is also going to be raised from 232,000 yen or per, per month through 232,000 yen per month to 290,000 yen per month. Um, well, we definitely make people a little bit happier so there's a little more detail about uh, this other program that they they've initiated as well, and just basically trying to make everybody happier. One of the things that they have implemented in this program is giving them the ability to choose like where they get to work, when they work, how long they work each day stuff like that so um and it's all going to be based on their job role and project goals stuff like that that's pretty progressive it is very for what i heard for a lot of the japanese software companies yes yeah um yes i mean it's great you know you made you made a game that has an amazing game which i know you'll talk about in a second but Mm -hmm. has 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 done really well and I mean, why not give it back to your employees? I mean, it, that's a sign of I'm not saying I, I don't give me take this out of context. I'm not saying like Bandai is the best company in the world. I'm sure yeah. they have things that are probably not great. I'm sure. But, you know, little things like that do matter because like, yeah. you know, people want to say like, how do we make our employees stay? Well, it's like, well, give them raises, you know, let them take time off, let them spend yeah. the time with their family and and let them have a future, a career and you know, you give those people that type of thing, one of those three things, and they're going to want to take around. So it's, well, it is it, cool. It's nice that they did this because they've kind of had two. I, I hesitate to say the word hits in a row, um, but they're, but they're, they're also the people behind tales of Arise, which did yeah. fairly well. Uh, be it being a sequel. It, it really took off, did fairly well. Um, I mean, come on to, they own Pac-Man. They're Namco. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they got the Pac-Man. <laughs> I mean, we know uh, people are still playing that. I mean, come on. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, and there's been tons of Pac-Man stuff in the arcades and in uh, game consoles too. I literally the was Pac-Man playing Pac-Man Museum. 2 or actually Pac-Man. Is it Pac-Man 2, I think it is. Yeah. The the one that's like the adventure game where you click and shoot the slingshot. I guess, or yeah, play there's what? tons of them. I've never oh. heard of this. I'm going to have to. Remind me next time you come over because it's one of uh, yes. my significant other's favorite games. Now, oh, one you may not be definitely. familiar with, but some people actually are. Miss Pac-Man. And, and is yeah. also <laughs> just another reason why Everybody Japanese does. arcades are immensely awesome and U.S. arcades are just withered husks. Uh, and I'm going to butcher this, uh, but uh, Takio Please no- correct him. Tatsu Jin, uh, Tatsu Jin, uh, which is the drum master, which is one that I really uh, encourage oh. people to go look up and is available. It is a rhythm game that is not quite as bat shit insane as some of the Japanese rhythm games can get, but uh, is still pretty cool. Cool. Uh, but yeah, they, they make a lot, a lot of stuff. 
Um, no. And some, you know, some of it we know. I mean, hey, the Subnautica. They have their yeah. they have their paws in Subnautica. So there's some stuff we know and some things they that we don't. So it's kind of cool that they've had some of these popular franchise, some not in the U.S. popular, but um, it's nice that they're increasing. Because if I remember correctly, in that it wasn't the Elden Ring developers that were getting a salary increase. It was like all of their Japanese developers, I think, were getting. Yes, 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 yes. That's so that's across the, the mm-hmm. board. Which is good because they've mm-hmm. had a number of big releases yeah. recently. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Eurogamer.net uh, just put out an article announcing that Elden Ring, and I'm quoting from the article, Elden Ring earned the biggest non-FIFA or Call of Duty video game launch in the UK since Red Dead Redemption 2, which was in 2018, which is a huge feat. This is amazing. I know yes. so many people who are very excited about this game. My brother-in-law mentioned it a couple of times. And as soon as it came out, was trying to play. I got on Twitch and watched a couple of streamers play it. It does look like a pretty amazing game. That golden oh, it's tree great. is It's great for the trash can. <laughs> I kid. I, I, well, <laughs> the game is great. The game, like... Let me back up. So, uh, and I read this, it was a, a meme on Reddit. Let me back up there yeah. from that <laughs> controversial statement that I just said. Yeah. So there, Ooh, there, was, there was a meme on fired. Reddit about Elden Roll, or Elden Scroll, or Elden, Elden Ring, or Elden whatever Scrolls. this game is. And they said, you know, because it's got 10 out of 10 on a bunch of different, like, like, com- like companies have yeah. said 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, just because like, somebody posted, it's like, just because a game is 10 out of 10 doesn't mean that I have to to like it no no Come absolutely on. you're absolutely right yeah right not every game I is mean, for everyone just right. because it's a good yeah you know well it's like, the thing it's it's 10 yeah. out of 10 but i'm not i'm not interested yeah. like and, yeah. and don't get me wrong i think it's a great game i don't have the mental capacity or patience to deal with that game mm. i i played demon souls so initially on okay. ps3 i played demon souls and i was gifted that by my brother my loving brother who i'm sure is listening to this and the story goes out to you, uh, but he bought it for me for Christmas and it, I was like, oh, cool. I've never heard of this game. I'll play. It was the first one of the, of the series, like the, the whole thing that kicked it off. And I played that game and I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated right. within like the first 10 minutes. I was so angry at that game. And, and when I told him about it, he kind of laughed because he was like, he knew it. Like, that's why he bought it for he me. Knew. He knew it pissed me off. And, and I and I and I shit you not. I don't know to this day what happened to that game. This is me uh, being truthful. I do not know what happened to that game, but it disappeared. Well, I have no recollection. Oh my gosh, maybe but it Zacia's brother will send us an email. Actually, just send it to 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 not Mike. <laughs> And send it to one of us. Ask Mike for our specific email addresses, and that way we can read it without him knowing. And then it will be like this huge surprise. Yeah, right. like well, so, I mean, he knew what he was doing. He knew. I just don't like it. And I tried. I've tried to play so like Dark Souls, and it's just no, not yeah. my thing. So there are a couple of things. This one's a little bit more open world, so it gives you some more flexibility. Where those games which were much more corridor based mm-hmm. okay. don't have. Uh, just, which is kind of cool um, to give him is, but, a point but though to be to be fair if you didn't like that type of game before this game is not going to make you like that type of game <laughs> yeah. right so my brother to his point is the guy who played Dark Souls with a character that had just his underwear and beat the game on like extreme difficulty yeah. so wow. that that's him no. not me that now, is not the- me I like to farm and fish and stuff like <laughs> <laughs> and chop wood. Yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, and chop wood. So the other the other reason, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about this, and and some people would be like, "Well, what do I care about this being blah to blah in the UK?" Um, and you'll see this in a lot of stories where they talk about the UK sales and not <laughs> mentioning as much about the US sales, and that's because mm-hmm. in the US sales are a lot less transparent. In the UK, they are able to report on both physical mm. and digital sales, whereas yes. in the US, digital sales aren't made transparent. So it's a lot it's a lot harder to understand 
what the impact is. So a lot mm. of news places right now will look at the UK for how big of a release it is to get kind of a barometer of how big that release is elsewhere where they can't see the whole picture like they can in the UK. Yep. So they were reporting that 68% of the sales came from digital downloads. 85% um, of those sales were, on, were Xbox downloads. And of those, 73% were the uh, PC players. And then the PlayStation, it was a 50-50 split between digital and physical uh, copies. Yeah. So. So speaking pretty, of pretty awesome. uh, EA FIFA, which is one of the things that uh, did kind of outsell Elden Rings there, but that that's, makes sense because it's going to. No. Uh, but apparently EA FIFA decided to um, go ahead and join in on the sanctions against Mother Russia. And they are actually removing <laughs> Russian teams from the EA FIFA title, what? which is that's a pretty big thing. And it's that's not just huge. FIFA, actually. It's not just FIFA. Because, uh, like, you know, sure, Russia, soccer, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, what's a sport, a frozen sport that you could see Russia playing a lot of? Hockey. Especially in, like, the Olympics. Curling. Hockey. Thank you for having <laughs> more brain cells than Mike. <laughs> or at least. I mean, curling is a frozen humor, sport. Technically. It is. You know? It is. It is. Is it a good sport? It is a sport. Like it sport. is a sport. It is curling. technically a sport. It's a physics game. <laughs> yes. Yes. But no, yes. Hey. NHL, NHL 22, FIFA 22, FIFA Online, FIFA Mobile. EA uh, says that they are, have initiated the processes for removing the Russian teams from these games. Games, uh, so, I mean, yes, maybe I'm a decade too late in saying this, but welcome to the digital age. I know, right? Where you can buy a game, uh, which technically most of these games, for the vast majority of games, you do not own the games. You sign a EULA that says you are licensing a copy of the game from the, from the provider. Mm -hmm. uh, but we won't go too far into that. That's a whole other rabbit hole. We'll save that um, for another podcast. Yeah, right. We could do like, we could do a steam deck size Zycia, like total rant oh on just on EULAs. <laughs> um, uh, which by the way, I don't know if anyone knows uh, just side side, rail on eula's really quick uh if you if you actually someone actually read the eula for for peacock the streaming service and found the uh recipe for dave's white chili in it oh <gasps> what yes nice i mean people hide that stuff in there all the time because they know most people right. don't read it they skip through it if if they have to scroll through it they scroll all the way to the bottom hit press or they just say mm. next right so uh but anyway uh, so What's yeah. interesting about the EA thing, the FIFA thing. So what happens because remember FIFA is, is, is making a lot of money off of these fantasy leagues. Like the, the, what do you call it? The, um, like the leagues, yeah, that, the, like, the, the FIFA ultimate league, FIFA ultimate league FIFA and things ultimate like that. Team, so what if team? you have players that are Russian players that are no right. longer going to be a part of the game and these are worth money. Like these are your like yeah. key people. Uh, again, welcome to the age where you can buy a game, have a game, and the publisher can come out and change it. Now, yeah, yeah. yes, in most cases right now, people are behind this change. And I hate to be a doomsayer because I, like I'm normally not, but like really that's that's something they could they could do. They could they yeah. could totally change the game that you bought yeah. and make you like really dislike it. Yeah. Rocket yeah. League. I mean, sorry, I didn't need that. Well, well. <laughs> no, what? no, that's, that's that was exactly on topic. That was exactly what I was trying to say. Is is that it's kind of interesting that they can just reach yeah. out and make and just massive changes to your game. Fortnite all the time does it. People people are like, yeah. Oh my These god, they changes, introduced this yeah. weapon that's spray and pray, and I hate it so much. And I'm like, get good with that weapon. Stop like. Stop like just doing boxes did and shotguns. Did you just say if you, get good? Get did good. that just yes. happen? He did. Are he you, really did. Did you just did. say 
For- yes. So in context with Fortnite, Brian, Phoenix Nova has said, get good scrub is what I heard. I heard get good scrub. That's all I heard. Well, I didn't say scrub, but but I mean, if but it, it applies to anyone in any game. If you are going to get so locked into one particular meta, especially mm. in a game that is a live game that involves, you're going to be careful with meta. Meta is a term something. now that could be a whole multiverse thing. So this is true a company. Too. Yeah, a company with like uh, people with no asses or legs. It sucks that we can't even talk about meta anymore about having to yeah. clarify that it's not the company, but like an actual term. Like, oh, it is right. pretty sad. That is uh, pretty sad. So there's more. So kind of kind of looping back around to where we started, which is the uh, uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, and and uh, not to make light of it, but in all reality. <laughs> In all reality, there are people I mean, in the Ukraine that are actually making light of this in a way to try to find some of the humor in this bleak situation. Yeah. The Ukrainians themselves are trying to, you know, like cheer themselves up in some ways. Some of it is they are putting captured Russian tanks on eBay for five hundred thousand dollars. Um <laughs> Saw I would that. love for someone to buy that. That would be super, awesome. super awesome. Did you see uh, the I also, one I saw where the, the, the tractor tweet? trailer was oh. hauling off the Russian. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, tank. Like a farmer, like basically farmer. hooked it with a yeah. hook and drug. And like you can see the Russian soldier running after like, it as he like, tows it off. Wait, wait. <laughs> I have well, uh, another was, one that I there saw. There's a tweet from uh, from the uh, effectively the Ukrainian version of the IRS. They basically said, hey, don't worry about claiming income from captured <laughs> yes. Russian equipment, you can go ahead and sell that. Just keep all that income. Yeah, keep yeah. all that money for yourself. It's funny is so there was another video like a TikToker basically got into one of the the tanks that they had and filmed how to turn it on and how to use it. They're like, yes. so pull this switch, click this button, and then you do this, mm-hmm. and then you slip this thing thing, and it's like boom, you're ready to go. And it's yeah. like, yeah. oh my god, yeah, it's, no, I love man, it. Like. The information age just <sighs> weaponizing uh, the ability to like steal these things is amazing and like, awesome. I I obviously hope that this doesn't get out of hand and do anything crazier than we've already right. seen. Obviously, outside of people who've lost their lives and such. But right. when the history books are written about this invasion, it really is going to show a lot of a, one thing on each side. One, yep. Ukrainians are very strong people that are like willing to like obviously fight for their country, including their Mm -hmm. president, like down to the wire. And then you have the other side, where it's like you thought Russia was this multi massive power that if like they wanted to do something, they would just come in and do it. And it's like not happening. Like we are just not, they they are just not capable of doing this. Like I just, it's all cold war era material. Like it's just bad. Like I don't understand the country who repeatedly said, don't wage war against us in the winter because winters are bad around here and you're going to have problems with supply chains who then makes the same <laughs> as if we were already having mistake. supply chain issues. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just, but, it's just like, it's so the, la- the latest thing <laughs> is that anonymous, the hacker group mm-hmm. that, uh, goes around and uh, with their own moral code and they, they mm-hmm. do have a moral code, although we may not always understand it. Yeah, and they did um, announce that they were basically waging war too with them. Cause they said, yeah. You know, oh yeah. They, earlier, they've been waging you know, war. They've been, uh, they've like uh, claimed week. that they've uh, absconded with a billion dollars worth of rubles. Although good luck that being worth anything now. No, um, <laughs> but they, they did say, that uh, they were going to offer $52,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, for every surrendered tank. Um, uh, They were going to offer that to the tank crews themselves. So instead, you know, with the ruble crashing, uh, trying to give them some type of currency that they can use with, uh, to buy things with uh, possibly, um, assuming they find someone that will accept it. Uh, 
So all they have to do is they have to uh, surrender their tank and wave a white flag with the word million on it. The password million on the white flag so that the hacking group can recognize them. And then I guess from there, determine who they are and transfer Bitcoin money to them. I don't know. But So what's scary um, is if that actually happens. That it's like, right. wow, Anonymous is kind of wild. They actually have like facial recognition. They have a way to like <laughs> figure out how to more. find you. Like, which I'm not saying I mean, they could be. they're kind of wild I mean, already. Like, we don't obviously know who the Anonymous group is. That's obviously why they're it's, called that's Anonymous. That's the word. Mm-hmm. That's the um, name. But like, it could, it could include kind of people from, it could just be a bunch of people in their basement. It could just be, you know, people of various. Absolutely like, a bunch of people in their basement. <laughs> Well, I mean, it could even be like members of different, you know, KGB, Mm -hmm. CIA, like, you know, spec. I mean, all these, we don't know. I mean, we don't like, we don't know who's included in this. So, I mean, maybe there is a possibility. He could, he could be, he could be, he could be. And and the other thing, it could be anonymous, could be just one person. We don't know. Like, there's just no way to know. Oh, no, 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 no. They're definitely not one person. (laughs) We don't think so, but I mean, it could be. No way. Are you anonymous? <laughs> is that what I'm hearing right now? Are you telling me you're part of the? <laughs> I'm just saying it's I, I, not one person. I think it's Demirin, and that's why he's not here. I'm just probably right. That he's probably uh, claiming he's probably delivering he's the Bitcoin right now. Single-handedly trying to defeat the Russians <laughs> in the Ukrainian that's war uh, through cyber <laughs> hey. attacks. Oh man, uh, we could take that into a whole different oh, conversation. I, yeah, I'm could. very, <laughs> I'm very passionate about this conversation because. It's it's something I like to stay up with, with, with news and, and things like this. And it's it's this is not the podcast for this is not what we do. Okay. And and we do want to make like I said, it's not a light subject we talk about. We have to to, to at least acknowledge it and you know say that. But mm-hmm. it, there's a lot to it. It's crazy. Um, but you know, if you want to message me on social media or something and ask me a question, if it's not too crazy, I'll maybe respond. But whatever. Um, but anyway, that is our news for the day, for today at least. And uh, listen to a word for our sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the games we've been playing, which are actually kind of exciting. Can't wait to hear about Very some games exciting. that Kelly played that we watched play. Some but, uh, games? Yeah. Or a game. One game, <laughs> specifically. But anyway, can't wait for you to come back. So hang on for just a minute. Take a word from our sponsor, and we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> and we're here. <laughs> you like that you guys hate that it was so great i loved it yeah so that was weird that was awkward actually and we're here i mean that's mike in a word (laughs) yeah that's great so man uh it's just it's hard like after the intermissions are over to like just chop it off and continue like acting like that didn't happen is so weird to me you know i have to like put my brain back into uh a new pattern you of thinking barely participated in that intermission. I listened the whole Patreons time. I'm still thinking super about things depressed about the lack of Zycia during that imp- well, intermission. Those who are uh, listening, then tell me how upset you are. Send us an email <laughs> or come to our live stream and, and then, then flood the chat with how disappointed you are with like memes or something. I don't know. You could do that too. Whatever. Either way, this is the part where we talk about the games we've been playing. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, phrasing and <laughs> pea braising. I'm upset. Okay, so peanut butter no, mongoose you want to know about in the phrasing? chat. Has you said, want to know about phrasing? Is that, sorry that, about that. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven, uh, which I've not played, but I was watching a little bit uh, because it's not out yet. Um, so you know, like a lot of a lot of games with cars, they'll be like S class and A class and B class and stuff. In Gran Turismo, they have a PP score. So you can increase your PP. Or sometimes you can restrict your PP if your PP is too like <laughs> large for that particular race. What does that stand for? Like performance profile or something? I literally do not know. I didn't even care. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's just your PP oh, score. Uh, and the bigger the so, number, the bigger your PP. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not going to act like I'm not going to act like I don't have a chat in discord named with a few people that will be undisclosed um, on this called big PP chat. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me, let me make sure that's accurate. It says big PP fam. Sorry. 
<laughs> that's, <PC fan. laughs> that's literally okay. the chat name. So they're secret people. They're like undercover. We're not going to talk about it, but that's, that's a hey, chat hey. room that, that I'm in. <laughs> Uh, there's only three members. It's just me and two others. Anyway, Sorry, I uh, members totally members. Like interrupted your uh, <laughs> ten word sentence about what you've been playing. So what I've been playing. So we played actually Game of the Moment this past week, uh, this past Tuesday, and we played a demo of a game that we talked about on the podcast probably a month or so ago, maybe right well, before more, Christmas. More than yeah, yeah. Maybe in November or so, Uh, but it's a game called my friendly neighborhood. And if you remember the article we talked about recently was that the developer was a cut. I think it was a Kotaku article. Basically the, the developer had found a bug. So the developers are actually two people. It's just like, I think it's a brother, two brothers. I think maybe I'd be, I'd be wrong. It's two people for sure. And he discovered this bug. and, And so let me back up. So my friendly neighborhood is a first person shooter first person horror survival game essentially with a shooter yes. aspect to it. So you think kind of like a Bioshock, uh, something like where you're kind of creepiness and then you have a gun and you have like lore and like puzzles to figure out and stuff like that. Um, but what it's based on is a, a child's TV show. So think about the Sesame studio Street. shut the studio. down studio yes. of a child's TV show called my friendly neighborhood with puppets in it. So <laughs> We'll get there in a second. So that Someone is basically the game. The so the, the developer the show was shut down. <laughs> the developer had found a bug in it and it was terrifying. I'll talk about that in a mm-hmm. minute. Uh, and because of that, yes. when the demo was released, I was like, oh, this is that game. I want to check it out because it seemed interesting. And mm-hmm. the fact that I have a child and we watch Sesame Street and we watch all these other, you know, TV shows that are out there that remind me of this. I was like, this would be kind of fun, right? Because I was I was literally telling day drinker and Phoenix mm-hmm. and Demir and that I was like, this should be, I'll, I'll host this one. I'll do game of the moment. Cause like this should, this should be fun. It shouldn't yes. be scary to me. It should just be fun. Just and I kind said, of, I hope it's scary. And you had that little gif of like that little girl. And I was really upset <laughs> yeah, about it. Cause that, that, she's so that, creepy. She's like, yeah, it's so creepy. The little horns and stuff. <laughs> yes. But, uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll host this, whatever. I'll do it. I'll do it. No problem. So I do that. And on Tuesday, I down well, I downloaded the demo before that. I started playing the demo. And it's actually pretty well done. It it starts off where you're yeah. kind of like uh, I don't know what exactly the room I'm in, but I, I go to the front door to ca- enter this building, like this one warehouse door. And it said there's a little puppet comes out of this little like sock puppet comes out of this little tube and he starts talking to me. Like, hey, by the way, here's all the lore that you need to know about why you're here. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, and my character has a voice, which is a big turnoff for a lot of people, but this one does have a voice and starts talking to, you know, Hey, well, no problem. It's like, it seems like he works there. Like he's part of the studio set. Mm. Like he knows the pup, the puppets know him, you know? So they're like, Hey, big bad boss is uh, going through the servers again. He's not going to be happier here. Blah, blah, blah. So like, all right, cool. And you go into the first room and the first room is this weird room, but there, there's a puppet there. And, the puppet is life size. So like a human size, it's not like half a puppet mm. with like a you know hand or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but it's a normal size person height, but it's, it's standing still. It's talking. And we'll talk about that in a second. It's just talking all this nonsense, but it's moving. We're like, like putting off to the second gibberish. future. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's, well, it's, it's 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 not gibberish. No, it's, it's, I was say it's not gibberish. I was going to say oh, gibberish, no, but sorry. it's not gibberish. It's yeah. not gibberish. But no. he's basically it's the hysterical. thing that disturbed me the first. Like the first thing that caught my eye was that he was bending at waist level, front and back, like those little car salesmen floaty dolls that you find, <laughs> yeah. like just flailing all around. His arms are in the air, and he's just like woo. And he's like, oh, man, can I tell you about how brushing my teeth? Because brushing my teeth is great. I used to use Worcestershire because it's no. so fantastic. And he I'm like, says you can pick any condiment you want to brush your, with your, your teeth with. I choose that word that I can't Worcestershire. say. Worcestershire. Yeah, I choose horseradish. Like, <laughs> and then- hold, hold on. I would like to point out the very, very rare thing <laughs> happened that we found a word. Oh. That Zeiss can drink. pronounce and day drinker can't. I usually can't it's really totally not. opposite. Because I get so, in my head about how it's written. 
go. Sorry, so we'll talk about that so later. that happens, <laughs> and and it's and it's very even it always rubbed me in like the the Half Life kind of vibe like very creepy corridor Hmm. there's this what it's just you and that thing all you hear is like the the environment around (laughs) you where it's kind of like water dripping or whatever and it's this thing goes going "Eh, i'm just so happy about this thing about marshall my teeth and blah 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 and he's just like so pumped would you like to be my friend and i'm like if i would have heard this audio at seven o'clock in the morning if not earlier when my son's (laughs) awake and he's watching Sesame Street, I'd be like, no brainer, this is no problem. I'm just zoning it out. But the fact that it's in this game at this point where I'm playing, this is terrifying to me. So, and you can ask them, and you can watch the video. It's actually on, on their YouTube. You, you were here. I was you were hilarious at how like, <laughs> tentative you were <laughs> on doing just basic movement. And we're like, Dude, they can't even see you. Just go by them. Like they, they're, yeah. they're not because seriously, if they do see you, they chase you down and try to hug you. And their hugs, are, to be are fair, lethal. are violent. Yes, yes. Violent Very violent hugs. Is um, so like a they, nice way to describe it. They, they don't it's seem to know creepy. their I don't own wanna, strength. It was awesome. I don't want to get in too much detail of the because this is a demo right now. And the game will be it's, released it's sometime in the future. Um, Fantastic but it, and it's like demo. an hour long. I played it for an hour. Mm-hmm. I was able to complete it within an hour. And even after beating it, uh, the developer has a message at the end saying like, hey, you should go check this area out that you checked out earlier. Mm-hmm. And it also unlocked different game modes. So ultimately... It's a, a puppet Sesame Street type of game, except they're. It's hard to say they're evil because they're not really evil. They're not no, evil. No, that's the thing. They're At deranged. least not yet. At least not deranged? yet. Yeah. No, they're Semi psychopathic. Almost like I'm deranged. Like I'm the one that's like. Yes. Being, that's the. You know. And I think that that's part of the whole. Manic. Game yeah. manic setup, right? But it's like, like only as in the like if I if my child uh, and and my child's way too young to play this. But let's say you know if I had kids that were able to play video games and I'd be okay mm-hmm. with them doing that. If I sat them down playing this game, they'd probably be like, like mommy, daddy, why are why are these <laughs> things wanting to like? Why am I not winning? Like why, why are, are why like are I want to hang out me? with them, but I keep losing. Like why do I keep yeah, losing yeah. when they hug me? I don't get it. Like it's it's oh a really God. strange game for an adult to play because you obviously know it's a game and you're like trying to like not do that. But as a kid, I, I can see this totally being a thing like, "Mommy, why or Daddy? Why is this like you know like they hug word, me and I die? Like what's going on?" One word I, of I advice. I do appreciate. I do appreciate that you you don't kill them. Yes, yes. which yes. is cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but you don't ahead, kill them. Trigger. My word of advice was, if you see duct tape. Yes. Grab it. That is. And, and what to add on to that is mm-hmm. if you see duct tape, grab it, but be very careful on how you use the duct tape yeah. because right. you only there's get, at least in the it's demo, it's not useful. Yeah. In the demo, there's only so much duct tape around. And, and so the duct tape is to able you to, um, restrain. suppress, restrain some of the enemies. So straight jacket enemies. It basically, or the puppet, Frenemies. so it kind of keeps them under control. So you want to make sure that, it, just just be careful. That's all. But anyway, it's a it's <laughs> I, a really well, neat oh, demo. Be careful. It, not only that, it, it's a neat demo. But one of the things that when you ended that, correct me if I'm wrong, because I believe I saw yep. this. Yep. I think one of the things the developer said is, by the way, not only is this a demo, but what you saw here today may not be the same in the final game. I don't remember that okay. exactly, but I mean, that's, and that's normal for any kind of demo. Like this things may change, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so, so speaking of something the, not being exactly the same, the bug. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the bug that was mentioned in this article a few months ago was that the developer was playing the game doing test runs or whatever. And something happened when he shot one of, and this is, by the way, a spoiler. So if you don't want to know this, fast forward. Skip ahead about two minutes. Or close your ears for now if you're listening live. Um, But they shot one of the dolls, puppets, puppets, and it multiplied like 
exponentially multiplied. It kept multiplying and multiplying. And he was like, whoa, this is weird. And as he tries to run down the hallway, they just kept multiplying and multiplying and started like popping into <laughs> existence as he's chased, getting chased by these. And it's like super disturbing. I'm like, super and he's like, creepy. he has a shotgun and he's like shooting, shooting, shooting these letters at it. And it's like, developer. The developer yeah, freaked out the developer. This stuff. The he developer is the one out. who tweeted about it. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say or not say that that bug now feature is in the game. I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> because it might not be. But you're, you're the it's at least be different. in the demo. And what I will say <laughs> is this. I'm not going to tell you where you may inc- encounter that. But when you do, I'm sure it'll surprise you. <laughs> and the last part is I did have a jump scare in this game. So I wasn't expecting that I would have a jump scare because it seemed very like anticip. I could see everything happening, but I definitely had a jump scare. So I can see how this game could be very different. Um, and then actually last thing, it does have puzzles and mm-hmm. it's not simple. Like turn the key, open this door move through it puzzle. It's like, Oh, you found a key. Great. Well, now that key opens the door where there's all these like things on the wall that you have to like match up and you don't have those pieces. So you have to go find them somewhere to come back to be able to put these in place. Well, and then you have to do the math behind it to try to figure I was out say, what this developer piece goes where hit Mike's you know, Achilles heel, which is it made Mike math. do math. Yeah. <laughs> which so he relied uh, on the audience to help him on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I figured it out, but no, it, it is. It's a, it's, it's not an, as straightforward, uh, even not, in the demo, like it's a tutorial. It's not a straightforward it's puzzle. puzzle. Like press one to add. Yeah. No, it's like, you have to think about it and figure it out. And it's not really straightforward. You have to like, look at the clues and really kind of piece it together. So yeah. really cool. And, and I, to be honest, I really like this, this demo. Mike pieced everything together. Mm. He just doesn't like math. Didn't know the math. <laughs> he he he, uh, he absolutely knew what needed to be done. He had figured out the puzzle. He's just like, "F you, math! I don't need you for my life." <laughs> exactly. No way. My math that. teacher was wrong. <laughs> so that it's it's a great demo. I definitely say check it out. It's called My Friendly Neighborhood. It's on Steam right now. The demos for free. Uh, but add it to your wish list. It'll be coming out sometime. I think this year is what the developers pushing for. Yeah, uh, but it's definitely awesome. Too. And and it's 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 great. I would say check it out. It's yeah. it's been an entertaining time. Other than that, I've been playing Lost Ark still. I know that's weird. I'm over sure. probably a hundred hours at this point into this game, and, and I'm still up. having fun. And I haven't been able to unlock the next story part, story arc, which is funny because it's Lost Ark and there's arcs in the game. Um, but I haven't unlocked that next part of the story yet because I'm not high enough level to get to that point yet. So I'm still grinding trying to do that. Uh, but I'm having a good time. It's been great. So I uh, highly recommend if you're not MMOs and you want to try one, like, or you're interested in MMOs, but you haven't found one yet that you like or want well, to try. Honestly, have you free. done anything MMO in this? Like have you what partied it, up with other players? Uh, I do matchmaking for dungeons and stuff, but it's like very okay. quick, you know, like, fair enough. Then you have, yeah. then you have, that's cool. You've done yeah, at least, but I mean, I have, I have our own SAS gaming guild. So if you want to join that, feel free to send us a request SAS gaming. It's all it is. SAS base gaming. And, uh, you know, we've got our guild and we're, we're building through mostly me, but whatever I'll, I'll play it till I'm, I'm not. And, uh, it's so far it's been <laughs> great. I'll play it till but I'm you, not. You're missing, you're missing one critical element there. What server are you on? Because the oh, guild doesn't we are matter on, anything. That's a good point. Good point. Solid point. Uh, so we're on North America East Carta, K-A-R-T-A server. Right. So if you want to join us, that's the server you'll have to be on. You can join our Discord. Actually, if you join the Discord, you'll find information about our guild there, along with all the other information of how to find us. So, um, But yeah, still playing it. It's, it's still, still kicking. Still I actually kicking. only played my friendly neighborhood because I wanted to play something else for game at the moment. If it wasn't for that, I'd still be playing lost Ark only. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, well, I did jump in on some demos during the demo fest that steam had. Uh, I wanted to take advantage of that, especially since one of the games that I was interested in previously, and we reported on previously as well, Mm -hmm. uh, had actually showed up and it is a game called neon white. Now, Neon White was interesting because 
we saw some gameplay that looked very much like a first person shooter, uh, movement, first person gun shooting, you know, the all we've just covered all the words in first person shooter there. Right. Uh, <laughs> but it also had this card mechanic and I was like, Oh, you use these cards and literally like use them and they disappear uh, to do special effects. I was like, okay. And in this very, very stylized art style of like very white and bold outlines and not, not what you expect to see normally. I won't necessarily say cell shading. It wasn't really cell shading, uh, but it was very stylized, very interesting looking. So I decided to play it. Now, what I did not know is what this, this game is a time attack game. Now, uh, for those that are not familiar with time attack games, uh, probably one of the best examples yet Just at the same it. time, <laughs> most obscure examples is track mania. Now track mania is that you have <laughs> oh, a <yeah. laughs> bunch of cars. You, well, you, you, you choose your race car and all the race cars have the exact same capabilities, regardless of how they look like they have the same capabilities and you use your car to go through this track to get the best time that you can. And then you just start oh. right over again and you race against your ghost and try to get a better time and, or race against the other. And you don't technically race against the other people. Now track mania is probably one of the best examples of that. I am going to um, act like I never heard you say the names of any of those games because those are the epitome of my gaming. I hate, <laughs> I loathe time trials. Like yeah. That, time attack games. Oh my God. Those now, are, now, oh. don't get me wrong. Uh, now Ugh. you could almost say this is like speed running in a way, except for the yeah. fact that one of the concept, cause like, uh, you got like cluster truck, cluster truck where you jump from truck to truck, to truck, to truck, and you cluster try to get as truck. fast as you a can to the name, bottom. By the way, <laughs> no, it's a great game. It's a great game. And you try to get to the end as fast as you can. And you go to the next level, but see the difference between a cluster truck or a speed run type game is that you are trying to get through all the levels consecutively as fast as you can. Whereas a time attack game, you're trying to perfect your run on a particular level. Now that doesn't mean you can't go to the different levels in the meantime. You can jump between levels. Uh, one of the nice things about it, and I'll actually, uh, for those that are able to see things, um, I'll actually show some of my gameplay. Um, Oh, one of the this things is that about game. It, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is that game, this. yes. So you're <clears> jumping <throat> around, and I'm actually picking up a weapon, and I can either shoot with the weapon, or I can use the card, and it does a secondary effect. In this case, it causes a explosion to happen, which bounces me up and allows me yeah. to jump higher. Um, it, and which, this is the same developer of, from Donut County, right? I sure can't a, tell for certain, but on, maybe yes, that, that might have been part of it. Yeah, you you check that out, please. That would be awesome. So, uh, so you get to the end, and now when you first start playing these, you just play level after level, and you get yes, to the end. It is, and then what you find out, oh, it is same as Donut County. Mm -hmm. Once you get to the end, you find out that you, as Mister White or neon, you're all called neons. Um, you are uh, in heaven and heaven is being attacked by demons. So what they do is they do this kind of trial. This is one of the, this is a great level, by the way, this is like shows you a lot of like the shooting, the jumping, the, the tra traversal. It's a beautiful. So level. can you still yeah. use the, the gun, the secondary action if you've used the gun. Yeah, your all, primary like well, your primary action is just shooting it. You have so let's see how there I missed. Um, your primary action is shooting it, uh, and you only have so many bullets. Uh, you see right, because I see the there. card going down. It goes white as you yeah. shoot. But I'm saying now, is, when you use the secondary if you action, shoot it all, you, if you if you use the secondary action, you burn the card entirely. Right, but can you burn the card after you've already used the primary action? Yes, because see, I'm already at okay, 29, so you can and save, then I just burned it. Okay, so you can save the shooting all the way to like the last bullet, then burn the card to like yes, do to get the okay, secondary action. Yeah, it, absolutely. 
Uh, so yeah, there's there, there's these different actions, and and as you can see, the the uh, secondary action on the purple card, not only does it like give you a boost when you jump if you happen to be near the explosion, but it's also an explosion that takes out enemies. Uh, so what you do is you go through this, uh, you find out that you're in heaven. They're having this attack of demons, and they do this mm. great tournament where you get to attack the demons for them and kill them, and. Um, go through and uh, help out heaven and the winner of the tournament gets to get out of limbo and go to heaven uh, because, and there's chests. You, you can see here that I have a chest. I'm going to switch to my sword. Well, actually, I just shot it. Uh, you can pick up extra things like health. Um, but the idea is that you're trying to win your way into heaven. See, elevate, watch this, bounce, burn a card, bounce, burn a card, bounce, pick up cards as I'm going up so that I have another one to burn. So there, there's, there's some co very cool. And you can stack cards. It looks like, yeah, you have like three cards of purifier. And right you've now. got to switch between the cards because you know, like you have it. You, you need to use a different card in a different situation. I should have gone up the river here. I didn't. The river is much faster than the stairs. Um, Who is that? On that is so. That's the next part. Is there is a story going on here? And the story is that you are one of the neons. You're neon white, but you actually find out that there's these other neons that uh, you have known in your personal life previously, but however, you don't remember them because of course, amnesia, that's gotta be, because really <laughs> Why not? There is a, there's a story here that very much pulls on anime tropes, 100%. Uh, you've got like Neon Yellow is this dude bro that knew, knew you in a previous life. Dude bro. And he's like, he <laughs> thinks you're the best and he wants to work with you. And then there's like um, Neon Violet, who, again, borrowing on the tropes of anime, is very much this young ish girl that you're uncomfortable about the fact that she seems extremely interested in you and calls you teacher and wants you to <laughs> oh, like whoa, whoa. teach you teach hey, her how teacher. to shoot and you're Show doing it as you're shoot. like behind her and showing her how to hold the gun and she's like can you shoot clearly turned on by this <laughs> Uh, so yeah, th this there's this. I actually I just, don't remember amnesia. It literally stated that. <laughs> yeah, like I don't right. Remember. Yeah, exactly. Amnesia. This is so there. There's some. There's some. It really borrows on some uh, anime tropes for the background story that's going on. Um, see, Mister White. He he. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Oh God. Uh yeah. It's just. So it sounds like you're playing. You're playing another, uh, what is that game? Boyfriend Dungeon? So it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, know. but uh, the nice thing is, is that the story is a little uh. bit more in between things, especially once you get to heaven, because once you get to heaven, well, it sounds you like realize your already got that. To <laughs> oh, yeah, right? He, well, it depends, because he was very uncomfortable there. Um, mm -hmm. One of the married. things that you learn on heaven <laughs> is that to be able to continue going forward, you need to have a certain level, Mr. Mikey, which you're <laughs> at. Um, and to get that level, you have to get, Mikey you have to, a cat too. <laughs> God, I love how it's neon spiritual services. Yeah. Right. <gasps> well, you're neons. Uh, you have to like increase your level by doing better and better at level. Cause I was doing bronze, most of these levels and like you need to gold or better ACE is the other one, which is, finding shortcuts in the levels, finding different ways to move around level, which actually I have coming up. See, I'm at 96. I need to get 91. So I, I go back to this level and I'm like, okay, let me play different ways through this level. And it's like, oh, okay. I see that I have a different way I can jump up that maybe I can like shortcut. And here I did not jump up. So I think this is, I think this one, I just get gold. Uh, so in, you just, you keep getting better and better at your time. What's well, better than gold? Ace. Oh, I said that a moment ago. Oh, so I increased my rank there. I don't, I don't think I ever got ace on this one, but I did kind of figure out there was this way like, oh, okay. I can 
uh, instead of, you know, going through the normal way, like you just saw, I can try. And I don't think I did it successfully here. Actually, I didn't do it at all there. Let's go a little bit further on. See, I figured out, Oh, I can jump up on this. And then I just said, uh, I'm, I screwed it up. I'm just going to start over. Cause at any time you can just hit F and start your run over again. So as soon as you think, yeah. eh, I messed that up. See, I'm like, ah, oh, how do I get up there? <laughs> and I keep playing with it until eventually I'm like, oh, I figure out how I can jump up on there and I can shortcut, shortcut my way across and be successful. Now I'm never very good at it. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, I missed my jump. I'm like, oh, I got to shoot that guy. And I shoot them and then I can shortcut across. And eventually, sure. I did decrease my time a little bit, but that's the thing. You have to be invested in the loop of getting your, finding those shortcuts, finding those different ways to get around in order to shave that second and a half off of your time so that you can get a little bit better at it. If that is not up your alley, then you're not going to like that game at all. But it does have a cool aesthetic and it is kind of cool to play. That's cool. It looks cool. I mean, I like the idea behind it. So time trials to me are like, it's so say time trials. Thank you. Cause like there was a game called trials on Xbox 360. Oh yeah. That's a great example. Thank you. And it's a physics, uh, dirt bike game. And you know, trials it's, is like it's a real literally motorcycle huh? or not motorcycle, but like a, like their trial. There's a competition. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based so this game is based on that, except uh, more over the top explosions over the top. and like make think about uh, circus level. But like it's one hundred percent based off of that. Yeah. Okay. So that game, like I used to play the the, the shit out of that game because like man, do I had to get the and the thing is like they had the ghost mechanic with Xbox, so you had all yes. your friends and you would be playing, and all of a sudden you see a dirt bike pass you, and you're like. No, like, God, like, so how did they do that? What, what did that they game, do that they got faster? That than? game, ah, oh, that's, that's a, that's a, a thorn in my history. So another game was <laughs> Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. There was a, mm. at the beginning of the game, in order to pick the difficulty, you could select this course, like a training course. And based on how well you did in the game, in the training course, it would select your difficulty. So once I knew that I did it the first time and I was like, oh, it's like, oh, I think you could play normal. I was like, what do you mean normal? What is this? So <laughs> I had to go back and I had to play it till I got to like veteran. And I would like literally it was to the point where I was like taking the zip line in and I was like throwing a grenade and I was immediately reloading, <laughs> switching weapons. And I was going through like John Wick, like pop, 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 pop. And then <laughs> switching over, throwing another grenade through a wall. And like I was just doing yep. all these things like synchronized, like with the thing to get to veteran just so I could play. Cause I'm like, has to be, has to be perfect. Like I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, yeah. you get this rhythm down and you perfect it in, in some ways. Now the other really good comparison here although it is completely different is super hot. Super hot is less of a time trial time attack game, but there is that like ability and desire to go back and play a level so that you can perfect everything. Okay. I'm going to shoot here and then I'm going to throw my gun at this guy and I'm going to pick up the pool cue ball and throw it at this guy. And then I'm going to catch this gun that's in the air and shoot, shoot. So yeah, there there's this, you like ballet of perfection that you're trying to put together. Right? Yeah. It's very, no, it makes sense. No, that's cool. Uh, the other game I played, uh, and I didn't play as much of this, although I, I was kind of intrigued on it, uh, especially since there's wood in it, uh, what? is core keeper. Now core keeper, it, you start underground and in the dark and you find wood and from the wood, you're able to make torches and you can start seeing around and you see there's these Did you cores say that are inert core I know. I'm already in. with wood. You find wood, you chop the wood in the dark and make torches. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you, you, it's, it's one of those games, uh, in, in way similar to Minecraft. Um, it looks a little bit more like Stardew Valley, except for a little bit higher res ish, not quite as pixelated. Um, I, and in other ways, kind of like Terraria where you're starting from the basics, you gather items, 
you create a crafting table and you create better items and then you find other things and you mine and you find copper and you make copper stuff. And, but there, but so, the basis around it is there's these cores, these like four or five cores in your starting area that are inert initially. And you're trying to find crystals to power them. I don't know why yet. Cause it's a demo, <laughs> and That's I didn't what they get told very me to far. do. <laughs> All I cool. know is you're supposed to find crystals and feed them. Like one of them you is had, like, listen, you had me at wood. You don't have to like try to sell me. <laughs> yeah, <this>. right. I mean, <laughs> one of it's them already is downloading. Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> like one of them is like, you know, and now he's playing insatiable, the gorgonator <laughs> or something like that. And I was like, what does he want? Like, obviously to eat a lot, but I have no clue the other than he wants crystals. Um, so uh, uh, I it's, do it's want very crystals good sometimes after a long night of drinking. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Lyft uh, driver, please take me through the crystals drive through <laughs> until you get it. And you're like, this is the worst decision I've ever made. Like, and why I would I eat like three of them? I'm like, oh, and these fries that's, don't even have salt. <laughs> only because crystals is a pale comparison to White Castles. Oh, uh, see, I have never had White Castle. Never had White Castle. They are superior yeah. in every way. Okay. Uh, but anyway, and, but and yet still being completely inedible, except for at three o'clock in the morning when you're when you're like oh, trying to stave gosh. off the hangover. Yeah. And That's even then, they're not fun. Yeah, they get anyway. gooey with the- sidetracked. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, like it, it's something to it. check out. It's got really nice uh, aesthetics and art. Um, I didn't get too deep into the crafting menu, but it seemed to have some depth to it for a demo. And, uh, it was pretty cool. Like you, you like, you would find underground rivers and you'd have to, you literally get a craft bridges that you put down to go over the rivers. Um, and I seemed to be able to like, I was one intriguing thing is I was able to like pretty much dig anything. Like I was able to dig the walls. Sure. That makes sense. You got to dig through the walls to get places. Cause it, it's, it's I almost mean. like a three quarter perspective, except it's not isometric it's kind of dead on instead of three quarters but the weird thing is is like for a lark i dug the ground and it made a hole in the ground which i couldn't fall into because it's not a dig down like terraria type thing uh you're only on one level so far that i've known and i was like i created this hole in the ground which i no longer can walk over and i have no clue why uh, but it was kind of intriguing that I could do that. But speaking of intriguing, something that um, let's just say <laughs> Zycia was extremely concerned about viewing, being involved in, uh, definitely did not want to play at all. Well, I wasn't going to play it, but I was going to at least uh, I wasn't going to play it. <laughs> I wasn't going to play it. What is it? So, um, we had tweeted about some controversy about a game that was going to be released last week called Martha is Dead. And PlayStation decided that they were going to. Spoiler, mm-hmm. by the yeah. way. There's tons Martha, of spoilers coming up. Martha I'm, is Dead. Oh, just, yes. True. Just. Biggest just spoiler sure. right there. <laughs> Which, by the way. Was taken into question multiple times multiple during times. that stream. No. no, you know why? I blame my friend. Oh, I know here. why. I, I know exactly why. Here. Yeah, I, I was like doing other things and working, and I was commenting how, like, "Dude, I know exactly about, where we're on the story." I and I'm shouldn't only half- play games while I've been. You know, it's like it, what, it was. It was late. It was like Friday. It was. It was like Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday, wasn't it? it was Tuesday. No, was it Tuesday? No, it was. It was a no, Friday. It, it was a Friday. It was, it was a Friday. Friday. It was Friday. It was not a Tuesday. <laughs> and I, rem- I remember was that funny, I was like, though. because Tuesday. No, I got. I had to take the girls to school. And <laughs> uh, I was like, no, no, this you was are not responsible. A, uh, this was this a time that a you were allowed week. to do this. Yeah, <laughs> they get a lot of time off. So, you know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> so Martha is dead is the name of the game. A lot of right. controversy surrounding it. Uh, PlayStation does not have the PlayStation. I, I don't know if they requested changes or that 
they force the developer to make changes to their game specifically on their platform everywhere else it's the full version but because it is a very graphic well it's, it's very graphic, graphic. It's graphic, it's but at graphic, the same time, but... like this is not; these are not U.S. developers. This yes. game is made somewhere in else in Italy. the world, and yes. and it's different for different areas. Like mm-hmm. people, yes. well, may not think that's a big deal somewhere else. Like that's just that's well, just how to, it is. Like okay, to give yeah. a little context, the the framework of the game is that it happens Spoiler. a little bit before World War II. It happens during World War II. So dirty. yes, there are Nazis involved. There, there is a lot of that history that can be very upsetting to some people. So yes. I understand. I definitely understand it. Well, I understand having like an NC 17 rating. Do and, your research before yeah. you play the game, because there mm-hmm. are number numerous triggers in this game. Yes. The yes. game is good. The game has an art style, which try, I don't know if it tries, but Mm. it does kind of dampen a little bit on some of those triggers, but those triggers are still there. Yeah. And and I've only played a little bit of this game, a very small portion of the game. So I'm sure I will run into other situations and I don't want to spoil it too much, but Here's your warning. I'm about to spoil a lot of it. The very beginning of the game, you find out that you are one half of a set of twins, which holds a place near and dear to my heart. But your other twin was kind of separated from you and also happens to be the favorite. There's never a favorite, just so we're very clear. In normal households, there's never a favorite. Well, if in somebody your still is watching, <laughs> um, in your household, there's not a favorite. In my household, there's not a favorite. So, your twin also happens to be deaf, and you find her dead, and that's the very beginning of the game. I'm not going to ruin it moving forward, but. Yeah. The deafness is plays a a, a, a part in it. It's a key part. The, the parents in their relationship plays a key part in it. Where you are Some plays a key part in it. European traditions that we that yes. U.S. may not be familiar right. with yep. with the how they process. deal with death, yes. the mourning process, yep. the mm-hmm. inter the determinant process. Uh, which is can be very different. There's yes. going to be some things that uh, at least the U.S. audience are going to be like WTF, which some of them may be. Don't get me wrong. There are some yeah. scenes in this that are shocking, regardless who the F you are. Absolutely. Yeah. But there are other things in this that are just different cultural norms that can be out of place or shocking to the U.S. Yeah. as well. And even with that, some of this Still game fantastic. too. fantastic. Yeah. Well, I was going to say some of this game too. Well, not some of this game. This game is not really a, like kind of the genre of the game. It's not a, it's not a first person shooter. It's no, not it's, a survival it's, horror. It's a narrative it's, game. It's a very it's narrative point and click. Mm-hmm. It game. is a narrative game. Yes. It's adventure. an adventure game. Yeah, yes. Sort of adventure. Yeah. Uh, it's weird to say adventure in this type of game because it's yeah. kind of. But down the, and depressing. That is the mechanics of game. it. Mechanics yeah. wise, um, it's yeah, an adventure it's, game. But it, in an adventure sense, in the point and click sense, like you're not really, mm-hmm. you're not going to be like again mechanics. running around and trying to run away and stuff. But as far as so, I've seen, I yeah, love no quick time horror games. Yeah, I love puzzle games, especially. I love when all three of those get combined. So I've already said, what remains of Edith Finch is my very favorite game. That actually is point and click. Hmm? Well, I'll just say it's it's similar to the Blair Witch Project, the uh, game, yeah, except yeah, yeah, yeah. without the quick time events, where like you yes. have to like right. fight and do things, like yeah. take all of the lore well, and like oh, the okay, fun no, parts hold on, out hold of that. On. There mm-hmm. was a sequence that there's a sirens again. Uh, it's there was a sequence my, that my was house. not. Sorry, 
<laughs> truly Children quick would. time, but was like quick time esque, which uh, seemed to indicate that you were setting the story based off of some decisions that you made, like left, right decisions. Like it wasn't quick time, like, yes. Oh, press X or you fail. And this person cleaves you in the face with the cleavers. Like it wasn't that type of quick time, but there was something along those lines. It didn't yeah. seem like there was a fail state with those. So uh, if you don't like quick time events, don't worry. It's not really a problem here. Yeah. The one piece of advice I will offer, I need to thank Venus White Star for, who was watching me stream this, is I was all about being immersed in the game, in the way that the game was developed. Everybody's speaking Italian. You've got subtitles. And she said, you know, you can, I think you can change it to... English <laughs> and that's probably a good idea. Uh, Subs not dubs. I'm, yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking. I mean, at even my that. Wine. Yeah, I mean, even that. Like, because you were playing it with the Italian mm. vocals with just yes. subtitles, but with the English. But subtitles, sometimes, yeah. but sometimes it's mm. better to enjoy it that way because I think we talked about this yeah. too. Was like yeah. watching film where mm, mm. like Squid Games is a prime example we used yes, recently yes. where Squid oh, Games is a Korean television show. <laughs> hated the dubs Hated, hated it. Yeah, oh, her. I did. Yeah, yeah. I did no, too. No, Zycia hated the dubs yeah. in that. Oh, yeah. I did yeah. too until I had to like get over Because like also Dark, mm. if you've watched Dark on yeah. Netflix, same thing. It's, it's a German show that they had to dub over and it, it's hard. Bec- the main thing with as a human, like uh, as a person, you're trying to watch the lips of someone. Mm-hmm. And see what they oh, say. No, was, and when you don't understand that. It was the Kung Fu that, remake that you hated the dubs. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. <laughs> That's the one. Um, <laughs> I, but I like when you, you can't yeah. follow the the lips of a person and then the language that you're familiar with, mm-hmm. it, you know, it messes with your brain. So and in that, this case, you're not. That's a big thing. Yeah. You're not having to follow but, somebody's lips. But mm-hmm. the the other, the, the, the con of that is that you lose out on the translation because there's a lot of things yes, yes. that are said in a certain language that even Spanish, like Spanish is mm-hmm. like, and it's, it's Spanish isn't that complex different between like English and Spanish for the most part. Like there's other languages yeah. that are way different. Way but more. Like, di- yes. Like Japanese to English. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Subtleties are lost hard. all the time. But Korean like with English. Spanish, yeah. like yeah. there's some things you say that just don't make sense like in English and you just have to kind of figure yes. out a word to say that. So when you act, you know, put the, the subtitle in there and it's a little, it, it tries to dis- display that in a way that English American, like Americans could read that or English pe- speaking people could read that. It still loses the context of exactly like the, 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 the thing they're trying to get across. It may not yeah. make as much sense as something that, you know, so there, there's pros and cons to it. You can play mm. it in English and, and enjoy it more because you can listen to it, understand yeah. it better. But at the same time, you may lose some value out of it because you're well, having to. You it know. does feel more yeah, authentic. Yes and, yes and no. I, I think it's more authentic. And, mm. and normally I'm a subs over dubs guy, right? Normally I'm <laughs> subs like. Subs over dubs. No, I agree. Like I'm subs, not dubs almost all the time. Uh, this is a video game where I could see the reverse though, because the subs watching trying to read subtitles takes your eyes away from the away art from, of the yeah. game. The game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this is a game, not a movie, yeah. not, yep. not a TV series. And that's, that's kind of where I think some of the exception comes in where I think it's a little bit more okay to go to the dubs where that way you can be more immersed in the story because you're not sitting there reading subtitles the whole time. Right. Sorry, day drinker. I kind of stepped on you. <laughs> it's all good. I, I was happy to have you guys there with me to be experiencing for if, with me for the first time. And My wife was there too. And she yes. was like, she told me the next day she goes, that Martha game was pretty cool. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, if you want to <laughs> play it or if you want to tell a day drinker to get back on and play it again, I'm sure she'll do it. Like, and I will, she was intrigued too. And let's, to get my, like, I don't get me wrong. Yeah. My wife loves video games, yeah. but she loves certain video games and to get yeah. her to enjoy something like that, yeah. like be like to mention it again was intriguing. So yeah. she obviously was involved in it with something well, that I wouldn't have expected. If I know one thing, it's today's <laughs> Thursday. 
which means tomorrow's Friday. And I look forward to Day Drinker streaming this <laughs> streaming again on Friday. Yep. I probably will, actually. Uh, Maybe so. Eventually we'll get her Twitch channel so set up. I, I, will, I will. Yeah, that's true. I will tell you, I was so excited about this game coming out that uh, at dinner with my family, I said, oh, my gosh. I like stopped what I was saying in the middle of whatever I was talking about. And my husband was like, what? And I go, the game I've been looking forward to just got released. And it's been a while since I've actually said that. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'll like I'll download it. I'll play it. Like, it'll be fun. But I was actually really looking forward well, to this and, one. And, and so that's, far it's, that's including it's, it's the awesome. it, like we can't stress enough. Do your research mm-hmm. first. There is serious yes. levels of yes. graphic violence or other things or, or mental violence in this yes. as well. So make sure you research it first. Nonetheless, amazing art style, amazing story so far. Uh, and, and like a complex story and it's very cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like I, I did not is, think I was going to get into this and I was only like half paying attention to it. And I was like, you know, I As am all about some moody dark, graphics, and it is it is beautiful. It is very beautiful. No, it's deep and dark as this game. was. Mm-hmm. It was. I was intrigued far more than I thought yeah. it would be. Very pretty and very realistic. At that, like, oh, it God, looked yeah. good. Looked real. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. That is uh, <sighs> that is what we've been playing this week. So, cheers to that for sure. So. If you want to send us an email, send us to uh, an email to goa at sasgaming.com. Apparently, I've had a little more alcohol than I usually have. I haven't had a couple <laughs> beers. I haven't done that in a while. Cheers so to that. Send us an email. Uh, yeah, cheers. So have a yeah, uh, send us an email to goa at sasgaming.com where we can read your question out loud or even just input or whatever you want to talk about. And it's more it's important to on. send an email this week coming up as well because oh, no. next week we continue with one of our special broadcasts. Mm -hmm. We will have a game developer here on got our attention, uh, specifically a game developer behind a fun little match four game or match three game. Sorry. Uh, called Minotaur princess. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be super awesome. So hang out with us Uh, next week. We'll definitely, uh, have questions in chat for you guys to, to do. Um, he'll be really sending all your questions at goa.sasgaming.com. So, um, other than that, there was some announcements on our website recently. Uh, so we did put out a blog post. We, we mentioned a lot of different things of our turning points of this past year and things we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at trying to get some merch. So we need to hear some feedback on that. If you're interested, uh, we have some feedback on some new content we've got going on. Uh, also that our Patreon. Right. So we talk about Patreon all the time, patreon.com slash SAS gaming. You know, everybody's like excited mm-hmm. about that. Well, we've actually lowered the prices on our first tier of our Patreon. So if you're interested and maybe the price point before just wasn't, you know, you just couldn't do that. It just didn't make sense. Fine. Uh, we've lowered it down to $2, $2 a month. So if you want to have an ad free experience for the podcast mm-hmm. audio, you want to have a uncensored version and also unedited, meaning you get the intermission as well. Uh, you'll get all of that with the the two dollar pot, uh, two dollar Patreon subscription right now, plus a, a different uh, Discord tag. Uh, and then if you want to spend five dollars, still like their lowest tier that we used to have is five dollars. You can actually do that now and get all of what I just said plus the credits at the end of our podcast. So uh, there's a lot of different things going on right now. We're trying to do this for you guys. We're also trying to make this, you know, fun and, and and exciting for you guys just as much as we are. So again, we love you guys. We appreciate it. We thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, that's pretty silly. It. So sasgaming.com, check out all of our blog posts. Uh, We've been posting a lot of stuff on there, game reviews and things. that so that don't really make the news or make the podcast. So feel free to check out those things there. Uh, you know, if you have any feedback, you can find our videos, our podcasts, and our blog posts there. So just check it out. It's a it's a mosh pot of everything we we have currently. So um, anyway, that's basically it. Until next time, uh, Ukraine, please be safe. We love yes. you so much. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I just can't. I, if I could just pick you all up and hide you in my basement, 
over here in Atlanta, or I would do that, but I obviously can't do that. So um, yeah. anyway, be safe out there. Until next time, you guys be safe. Easy.